With petrol prices reaching record highs, the quest for more energy efficient cars continues. Today, 20 teams from across the globe are taking part in the Shell Eco Marathon. It's taking place at the Swatkops Raceway in Centurion. They're testing self-built vehicles with technology that could make its way into cars in the future. Our reporter, Lindo Kutle Kulu, joins us now from Trackside. Uh, Lindo, I guess, uh, tell us a little bit about these vehicles. What do they look like? I don't see any uh, behind you. What do they actually look like? Well, Peter, a different type of race indeed this time around. But this race is, of course, not about who's going to finish uh, first or who's going to burn the most rubber, but it is all about the fuel efficiency of the vehicles that are presented here. Of course, over 20 uh, universities, tertiary institutions, in fact, joining in, in you know, uh, creating the most uh, fuel efficient car. And in terms of for me explaining to you what exactly is happening here, before I take you through how these cars look like, um, I am joined by Professor Johan Meyer from the University of Johannesburg's Electrical engineering faculty. Uh, Professor, take us through exactly what is happening here and what are we seeing in terms of these cars? Right, we are here at the Shell Eco Marathon and the purpose of the Shell Eco Marathon is to see who can get the most energy efficient vehicle and that is what this event is all about. It's not about speed, it is who can go around the track the furthest distance with a one liter of equivalent energy and that is what we have here. Professor, take me through um, how important this is. We understand that, in fact, South Africa has hit a record high uh, fuel increase in terms of petrol and other fuels as well. But how important is it for especially uh, com uh, uh, companies that, uh, you know, manufacture cars in terms of finding fuel-efficient cars? Well, absolutely, and this is why we fully support this event, and that's what this event is all about, is to stimulate these young minds that will now have to solve tomorrow's problems in energy efficiency, and that is why we are here. So they all have new New ideas. They're here to exploit technology, to control technology, and come up with solutions for our energy crises. So they are the guys that's going to solve for tomorrow the problems we have today in terms of fuel efficiency, in terms of pollution, because that is one of the big aspects why we are here. I mean, Professor, I saw, in fact, uh, in the program, one of the things that you said we should look out for is different types of energies, including, I mean, fuels, including salt water, uh, cars that are powered by salt water, as well as hydrogen. But just take us through some of the participants here. What are they using as their uh, fuel source? Right, we have three main categories here. The first category is the traditional internal combustion engine, which uses the fuel that we are all familiar with in our cars driving here on the road. The second category is the one that's getting more and more traction now, slowly migrating into mainstream is the electric vehicles. So some of these energies here are coming from battery or battery-powered electric vehicles. And the most exciting one is hydrogen fuel cells, where we combine hydrogen with oxygen, and the only emission is water vapor. And we believe that's one of the exciting technologies for solving our pollution crisis in the world. The salt water cars are little cars running on a salt battery, but that is just to stimulate our young minds how to think out of the box for alternative energies that we can use in the mobility sector. All right, Professor, we'll leave it there for now. We will be chatting a bit more about that. But uh, something I was very excited to doing, Peter, in fact, at this particular time, I'll move and show you uh, these futuristic-looking cars. But, uh, of course, the main objective here is to found the efficiency, the fuel efficiency of these cars. Uh, you know, the petrol price has been increasing for quite uh, some time right now, hitting a record high. And, in fact, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, increases in the future also expected. But this, what you are seeing now, is, of course, these cars that are partaking in the fuel efficiency, uh, trying to stimulate young minds into finding a way to uh, find a a fuel efficient vehicles, create fuel efficient vehicles. But this is just a testing phase, in fact, Peter, of what is happening. They're testing the cars uh, for safety as well as if they can brake. But just outside here is, of course, where these cars will be tested. Uh, they're saying that uh, they are given a certain uh, a amount of fuel that they use in order to test the efficiency of the vehicles they have created. We will just uh, try to find one or two cars that, in fact, are tested. But a lot of families, in fact, a lot of people, uh, this has piqued their interest. And, in fact, uh, uh, it will pique the interest of South Africans as well because uh, fuel uh, is a bit of a problem these days because we understand that when fuel increases, in fact, there's a number of things that uh, spiral a lot of that. You talk about uh, uh, the food uh, uh, you know, prices as well as uh, saying that it hits the poorest of the poor when you 
talk about paraffin as well. But these uh, uh, young people are trying to find a way now into dealing with the fuel efficiency of the cars. We are not like, in fact, to get one car uh, that is close enough to show you exactly what uh, they are, you know, uh, how they look when they are running. But uh, one of the things I think that mainly uh, has, uh, you know, has been uh, visible is uh, the design of the cars in terms of how they look, which uh, they are, uh, seem to be aerodynamic. They are, seem to be uh, challenging the air. Um, you know, and uh, they look like those cars, the F1 cars. Um, but uh, this is how these cars look like. Of course, the race will be taking uh, place a bit later on in terms of who can save the uh, most if, uh, fuel at uh, this uh, track. But it's not necessarily about who's going to come first, but rather about who will be saving uh, fuel once they've done those uh, laps in this uh, particular race track. Linda, maybe we can stay with these uh, pictures uh, with you. I see someone getting into that car behind you. I mean, generally, uh, if you could try and explain, uh, explain how fast these cars are sort of, you can't really call it a car, though. It almost looks like a, a go-kart. I know it's a fuel efficiency exercise. Uh, but uh, how fast do these little uh, sort of uh, uh, cars go? Well, uh, you know what? I will try to speak to one of uh, uh, the guys here. We'll just try. Can I speak to you, sir, before you go? Um, speak to the driver, in fact. But uh, uh, just take us through how fast this can go and why did you design it in such a manner that you've designed it? Uh, well, the top speed that we're looking at uh, should be around about 70, 75 kilometers per hour. Um, the way we designed this is uh, more aerodynamically designed and as well as to uh, fit our hydrogen stack, which is in uh, the back compartment over here. But in terms of uh, fuel saving, um, what uh, did you, um, you know, try to uh, tackle in terms of the problems? Uh, what, what problems did you encounter when you were trying to uh, create this uh, fuel saving vehicle? Uh, well, the first uh, problem that we had to tackle was uh, trying to uh, supply the hydrogen stack with enough hydrogen that would actually generate a voltage to run all the components as well as uh, uh, making sure there were no leaks inside the cell and everything was uh, up, or, uh, up to regulation standards. Just very quickly, do you think this will be uh, the future of uh, fuel in our country, seeing that we've seen a lot of fuel increases in the past? Very much so. Uh, everyone should actually have a uh, hydrogen cell car uh, going uh, towards the future. I think it is the way to go. All right, so some of the ideas we're getting there about the fuel efficiency of these cars. But if Mr. Mashuri will just keep an eye to that guy we just spoke to, they are preparing him to go uh, into the race tracks. And you can even hear uh, some of the cars, in fact, revving uh, behind us. But this is a, an, an exercise to find fuel efficiency and to tackle really the issue of uh, the ever increasing fuel. But uh, we will just try to move with you to the track. In fact, a lot of people are really raising some heads, see, seeming there are cars that are in the track right now that uh, are moving but uh, fuel efficiency is the name of the game here no one in fact uh, will be looking to rush it because we understand that speed equals a little bit more um, uh, fuel wastage but uh, this time around the race is of course looking at who can save a bit of fuel but uh, it seems that most of the cars have gone around the track there oh we are seeing one car in fact approaching here just to give you that picture they are not going as fast as possible but it's rather an exercise of uh, the fuel efficiency and I mean a lot of people will be interested in this uh, because uh, you know those matches that took place in fact uh, for a uh, fuel to go down perhaps we can focus our energy into something more revolutionary like finding fuel efficient cars but look at that uh, futuristically so uh, it's really challenging the aerodynamics because I think one of uh, the problems about cars is that uh, they do not challenge the aerodynamics and uh, therefore uh, air becomes part of the problem in terms of the fuel consumption we see in our cars today. Linda, thanks not for someone who uh, suffers from claustrophobia and not something you can really see on the M1 highway between uh, Joburg and Pretoria maybe. But Linda, I look forward to seeing you in one of those vehicles a little bit later. Linda Kutlek Kulu there live uh, from uh, the racetrack there uh, looking at uh, fuel consumption, a, fa a fascinating uh, a day out there at the Swatkops uh, racetrack.